Rabba Shura, Yahuchanan, Chapter 1. Baha Barashi, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with the Lua, and the Word was the Lua. He was in the beginning with the Lua, and all came to be through Him, and without Him, not even one came to be that came to be. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from Alua, whose name was Yahukanan. This one came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but that he might bear witness of that light. He was the true light which enlightens every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become children of Alua, to those believing in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the desire of flesh, nor of the desire of man, but of the desire of Alua. And the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us, and we saw his kabod, the kabod as an only brought forth of an ab, complete in favor and truth. Yahukanan bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has become before me, because he was before me. And out of his completeness we all did receive in favor upon favor. For the Torah was given through Moshe. The favor and the truth came through Yahusha HaMashiach. No one has ever seen Alua, the only brought forth bond son who is in the bosom of Ha'ab, he did declare. Now this is the witness of Yahukanan when the Yahudim sent from Yerushalayim priests and Luites to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, Ani lo HaMashiach, I am not the Messiah. And they said to him, What then? Are you Eliyahu? So he answered, Ani la, I am not. Are you Hanabi? Are you the prophet? And he answered, La. Therefore they said to him, Who are you? So we give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yahuwah, as the Nabi Yashiyahu has said. And those sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you immerse if you are not Hamashiach, nor Eliyahu, nor the Nabi? Yahukanan answered them, saying, I indeed immerse in water, but in your midst stands one whom you do not know, the one coming after me, who has become before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loosen. This took place in Bethania, beyond the Yardin, where Yahukanan was immersing. And on the next day, Yahukanan saw Yahusha coming toward him, and he said, Hana, look, the Lamb of Alua who takes away the sin of the world. This is he who am I said, After me comes a man who has become before me, for he was before me. And I did not know him, but he might be revealed to Yasharal. Therefore I came immersing in water.
and Yahukanan bore witness, saying, I have seen the Ruach coming down from the Shamayim like a dove and remain on him, and I did not know him. But he who sent me to immerse in water said to me, Upon whom you see the Ruach coming down and remaining on him, this is he who is immerses in the Ruach HaKadosh. And I have seen and have witnessed that this is Haban Alua, the son of Alua. Again the following day, Yahukanan was standing with two of his Talmudim, two of his taught ones, and looking at Yahusha walking, he said, See, the Lamb of Alua. And the two taught ones heard him speaking, and they followed Yahusha. And Yahusha turning and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They went and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. Andri, the Ak of Shimon Kafa, was one of the two who heard from Yohanan and followed him. First he found his own Ak, Shimon, and said to him, we have found Hamashiach, which means anointed, and brought him to Yahusha. And looking at him, Yahusha said, You are Shimon, Haban Yonah. You shall be called Kafa, which means a stone. And the following day, Yahusha wished to go to Galil, for he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. And Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andre and Kafa. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him whom Moshe wrote about in the Torah in the Nebi'im, Yahusha of Nazareth, Haban Yosef. And Nathaniel said to him, Is it possible for any good matter to come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. And Yahusha saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said of him, See truly, a Yashar Ali, indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathaniel said to him, From where do you know me? Yahusha answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel said unto him, Rabboni, you are Haban Alua, you are Ata Hamalek Yasharal, you are the king, the sovereign of Yasharal. Yahusha said and answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Greater than this shall you see. And he said to him, Amat u amat, truth upon truth, I say to you, From now on you shall see the Shamayim opened and the Malachim of Alua ascending and descending upon the son of Adam. Chapter 2 And on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galil and Ha'ama of Yahusha was there, the mother of Yahusha and both Yahusha and his Talmudim were invited to the wedding and when they were short of Yain wine Ha'ama of Yahusha said to him they have no Yain Yahusha said to her, Woman, what is that to me and to you? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he says to you. And there were six stone water jugs standing there, according to the mode of cleansing of the Yahudim, each holding two or three measures. Yahusha said to them, Fill the water jugs with water. 
and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. But when the master of the feast had tasted the water that had become Yayin, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good Yayin, and when they have well drunk, then that which is poor. But you, you have kept the good Yayin until now. This, the beginning of the signs Yahusha did do in Cana Galil, and manifested his cup old, and his taught ones believed in him. After this, he went down to Kafor Lacham. He and his Amma and his Achim and his Talmudim. And they stayed there not many days. And Hapeshach of the Yahudim was near and Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the set apart place those selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money exchangers sitting. And having made a whip of cords, he drove them out of the set apart place with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the money changers coins over the turned tables and he said to those selling doves take these away do not make the house of my father a house of merchandise and his taught ones remembered that it was written the zeal of your house has eaten me up and the Yahudim answered and said to him what sign do you show us since you are doing these Yahusha answered and said to them, Destroy this dwelling place, and in three days I shall raise it. Then the Yahudim said, It took 46 years to build this dwelling place, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the dwelling place of his body. So when he was raised from the dead, his taught ones remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Yahusha has said. And when he was in Jerusalem at the Pesach, at the festival, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he was doing. But Yahusha was not entrusting himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should witness a man, for he knew what was in man. Chapter 3 And when there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemon, a ruler of the Yahudim, this one came to Yahushua by night and said to him, Rabboni, we know that you are a moray from Alua, for no one no one is able to do the signs that you do if Alua is not with him. Yahushua said to him, Amat Uamat, I say unto you, unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Alua. Nicodemus said to him, How is a man to be born when he is old? Is he able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Yahushua answered, Amat Amat, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of Ruach, he is unable to enter into the reign of Elua. That which has been born of flesh is flesh, and that which has been born of Ruach is Ruach. And do not marvel that I say to you, you have to be born from above. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it but you don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it goes. So is everyone who has been born of the Ruach. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How is it possible for this to take place? Yahushua answered and said to him, Aren't you a Moray and Yasharal and you don't know this? Amat Uamat, I say to you, we speak what we know and witness what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If you do not believe when I spoke to you about earthly matters, 
How are you going to believe when I speak to you about the things of the Shamayim? And no one has gone up into the Shamayim, except he who came down from the Shamayim, Haban Adam, the son of Adam. And even as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so Haban Adam has to be lifted up, so that whoever is believing in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life. For Lewis so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life. For Elua did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already, because he had not believed in the name of the only brought forth son of Elua. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light, for their works are wicked. For everyone who is practicing evil matters hates the light and does not come to it, lest his works should be exposed. But the one who does truth comes to the light, so that his works are clearly seen, and that they have been wrought in Alua. After this, Yahusha and his Talmudim came into the land of Yahudah, and he remained there with them and was immersing. And Yochanan was also immersing in Ayin near Salim, because there was plenty of water there. And they were coming and were being immersed, for Yochanan had not yet been put into prison. Then a dispute arose between some of Yahukanan's taught ones and the Yahudim about cleansing. And they came to Yahukanan and said to him, Rabboni, he who was with you beyond the Yardin, to whom you have witnessed, see he is immersing, and all are coming to him. Yahukanan answered and said, No man is able to receive any matter unless it be given to him from the Shamayim. And you yourselves are witness for me that I said, I need Loha Mashiach. I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. He that has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because the voice of the bridegroom. So this joy of mine is complete, and it was right for him to increase, but me to decrease. He who comes from above is over all, and he who is from the earth is of the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from the Shamayim is over all, and what he has seen and heard, that he witnesses, and no one receives his witness. He who receives his witness has set his seal that Alua is true. For he whom Alua has sent speaks the words of Alua, for Alua does not give him Ruach by measure, but Ha'aba loves the son and has given all into his hand. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Alua remains on him.
Chapter 4 So when the master knew that the Pharisees had heard that Yahushua made and immersed more taught ones than Yohanan, although Yahushua himself did not immerse but his taught ones, he left Yehuda and went away again to Galil. And he had to pass through Shemaron. So when he came to the city of Shemaron, called Shechem, near the piece of land Yaakov gave to his son Yosef, and Yaakov's fountain was there. So Yahushua, being weary from the journey, was sitting thus at the fountain. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Shemarong came to draw water. Yahushua said to her, Give me to drink. For his taught ones had gone off into the city to buy food. The woman of Shemarong therefore said to him, How is it that you... Being, of Ye- being a Yehudi, ask a drink from me, a woman of Shemaron, for Yehudim do not associate with Shemaronim. Yehusha answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of Alua, and who it is who says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Master, you have no vessel, and the well is deep. From where then do you have living water? Are you greater than our father Yaakov who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Yahushua answered and said to her, Everyone drinking of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him shall certainly never thirst. And the water that I give him shall become in him a fountain of living water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Master, give me this water, so that I do not thirst, nor come here to draw. Yahushua said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yahushua said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one who you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Master, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where no one needs to worship, where one needs to worship. Yahushua said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither on this mountain nor in Yerushalayim worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, because the deliverance is of the Yehudim. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, in ruach, and in truth. For Abba also does seek such to worship him. Alua is ruach, and those who worship him need to worship in ruach, in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Mashiach is coming, the one who is called anointed, When that one comes, he shall announce to us all. Yahushua said to her, I, who am speaking to you, am he. And upon this, his taught ones came, and they were marveling that he was speaking with the woman. However, no one said, What do you seek, or why do you speak with her? The woman then left her water jug, and went away to the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all that I have done. Is this not the Mashiach? They went out of the city and were coming to him. But in the meantime, his taught ones were asking him, saying, Rabboni, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Then the taught ones said to each other, Did anyone bring him food to eat? 
Yahushua said to them, My food is to do the desire of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and the harvest comes? See, I say to you, lift up your eyes and see the fields, for they are white for harvest already. He who is reaping receives a reward and gathers fruit for everlasting life, so that both he who is sowing and he who is reaping rejoice together. For in this the word is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Shimronim of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who witnessed. He told me all that I have done. Therefore, when the Shimronim came to him, they were asking him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard, and we know that this is truly the Mashiach, the savior of the world. And after the two days, he left there and went to Galil. For Yahushua himself witnessed that a prophet is without appreciation in his own country. Therefore, when he came to Galil, the Galileans received him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they also went to the festival. Then Yahushua came to Cana of Galil, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Yahushua had come from Yehuda into Galil, he went to him and was asking him to come down and heal his son, for he was about to die. Yahushua then said to him, If you people do not see signs and wonders, you do not believe at all. The nobleman said to him, Master, come down before my child dies. Yahushua said to him, Go. Your son lives. And the man believed the word that Yahushua spoke to him and went. And while he was going down, his servants met him and reported, saying, Your son lives. He then asked from them the hour in which he came better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the inflammation left him. Then the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Yahushua said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed in all his household. Again, this was the second sign Yahushua did when he had come from Yehuda into Galil. Chapter 5 After this, there was the festival of the Yehudim, and Yahushua went up to Yerushalayim. And in Yerushalayim, at the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Beith Zehaf, having five porches. And there, in these, were lying a great number of those who were sick, blind, crippled, paralyzed, waiting for the stirring of the water. For a messenger was going down at a certain time into the pool and was stirring the water. Whoever stepped in first, then, after the stirring of the water, 
became well of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there who had a sickness 38 years. And Yahushua saw him laying there, and knowing that he already had been a long time, he said to him, Do you wish to become well? The sick man answered him, Master, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred, but when I am coming, another steps down before me. Yahushua said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man became well, and he took up his bed and was walking. Now it was Shabbat on that day. The Yehudim therefore said to him who had been healed, It is the Shabbat. It is not right for you to take up the bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Therefore they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Yahushua had moved, moved away, a crowd being in that place. Afterward, Yahushua found him in the set-apart place and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, so that no worse matter befalls you. The man went away and told the Yehudim that it was Yahushua who made him well. And because of this, the Yehudim persecuted Yahushua and were seeking to kill him because he was doing these healings on the Shabbat. But Yahushua answered them, My Abba works until now, and I work. Because of this then, the Yehudim were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Shabbat, but he also called Alua his own Abba, making himself equal with Alua. Therefore Yahushua responded and said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son is able to do none at all by himself, but only that which he sees the Abba doing because whatever he does, the Son also likewise does. For the Abba loves his Son and shows him all that he himself does, and greater works than these he is going to show him in order that you marvel. For as the Abba raises the dead and makes alive, so even Haban makes alive whom he wishes. For the Abba judges no one but has given all the judgment to Haban, that all should value Haban even as they value the Father. He who does not value Haban does not value the Abba who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me possesses everlasting life and does not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of Haban of Alua, and those having heard shall live. For as the Abba possesses life in himself, so he also gave to Haban to possess life in himself and he has given him authority also to do judgment, because he is Haban of Adam. Do not marvel at this, because the hour is coming in which all those in the tombs shall hear his voice and shall come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have practiced evil matters to a resurrection of judgment. Of myself, I am unable to do any matter. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own desire, but the desire of the Abba who sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to Yochanan. 
and he bore witness to the truth. But I do not receive witnesses from man, but I say this in order that you might be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, and for a while you wished to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of Yohanan for the works of the Abba, for that the for the works that the Abba gave me to accomplish, the works that I do, bear witness of me, and the Abba has sent me. And the Abba who sent me, he bore witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. And you do not have his word staying in you, because you do not believe him whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think you possess everlasting life in them. And these are the ones that bear witness of me. But you do not desire to come to me in order to possess life. I do not receive esteem from men. But I know you, that you do not have the love of Alua in you. I have come in my Abba's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you would receive. How are you able to believe when you are receiving esteem from one another and the esteem that is from the only Alua you do not seek? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father, to the Abba. There is one who accuses you, Moshe, in whom you have set your expectation. For if you believed Moshe, you would have believed me, since he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how shall you believe my words? Chapter 6 After this, Yahushua went away to the other side of the Sea of Galil, that is, Lake Kinneret. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw his signs, which he did on those who were sick. And Yahushua went up on a mountain, and there he sat down with his taught ones. And the Peshach was near, the festival of the Yahudim. And Yahushua, lifting up his eyes and seeing a large crowd coming toward him, said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for them to eat? And this he said, trying him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for every one of them to receive a little. One of his top ones, Andre, the brother of Shimon Kepha said to him, Here is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are these for so many? And Yahushua said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, and the men, numbering about five thousand, sat down. And Yahushua took the loaves, and having given things, he distributed them to the top ones and the taught ones to those sitting down, and the same with the fish, as much as they wished. And they were filled. And when they were filled, he said to his taught ones, gather the broken pieces that are left over so that none gets wasted. 
So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with broken pieces of five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. And the men, having seen the sign that Yahushua did, said, This is truly the prophet who is coming to the world. Then Yahushua, knowing that they were about to come and seize him, that they might take him and make him sovereign, withdrew again to the mountain alone by himself. And when evening came, his taught ones went down to the sea, and entering into the boat, they were going over the sea toward Kephornaim. And it had already become dark, and Yahushua had not yet come to them. And the sea was rising because a great wind was blow blowing. When they had rowed about 25 or 30 stadia, they saw Yahushua walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were afraid. And he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. They wished therefore to take him into the boat, and at once the boat was at the land where they were going. On the next day the crowd that was standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his taught ones had entered, and that Yahushua had not entered the boat with his taught ones, but his taught ones went away alone. But other boats came from Kinnereth, near the place where they had ate bread after the master had given thanks. Therefore, when the crowd saw that Yahushua was not there, nor his taught ones, they themselves also entered into the boats and came to Kephornachon, seeking Yahushua. And having found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabboni, when did you come here? Yahushua answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were satisfied. Do not labor for the food that is perishing, but for the food that is remaining to everlasting life, which Haban Adam shall give you. For the Abba Alua has set his seal on him. So they said to him, What should we do to work the works of Alua? Yahushua answered and said to them, This is the work of Alua, that you believe in him whom he sent. So they said to him, What sign then would you do so that we see and believe you? What would you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it has been written. He gave them bread out of the heaven to eat. Therefore Yahushua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moshe did not give you the bread out of the heaven but my Abba gives you the true bread out of the heaven. For the bread of Eloah is he who comes down out of the Shamaim and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Master, give us this bread always. And Yahushua said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not get hungry at all. And he who believes in me shall not get thirsty at all. But I said to you that you have seen me and still do not believe. All that Ha'aba gives me shall come to me. And the one who comes to me I shall by no means cast out. Because I have come down out of the Shamaim, not to do my own desire, but the desire of him who sent me. This is the desire of the Abba who sent me, that all he has given me I should not lose of it, but should raise it in the last day. And this is the desire of him who sent me, that everyone who sees Haban and believes in him should possess everlasting life, and I shall raise him up in the last day. Therefore the Yehudim were grumbling against him because he said, I am the bread which comes down, which came down out of the Shamaim. 
And they said, Is not this Yahusha, the son of Yosef, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down out of the Shamaim? Then Yahusha answered and said to them, Do not grumble with one another. No one is able to come to me unless Ha'abahu sent me, draws him, and I shall raise him up in the last day. It has been written in the prophets that they shall be able, that they shall all be taught by Yahuwah. Everyone then who has heard from Ha'aba and learned comes to me. Not that anyone has seen Ha'aba except he who is from Alua. He has seen Ha'aba. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me possesses everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of Shamaim, so that anyone might eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of the Shamaim. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And indeed, the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. And the Yahudim, therefore, were striving with one another, saying, How is this one able to give us his flesh to eat? Yahushua therefore said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of, ha of Haban Adam and drink his blood, you possess no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses everlasting life, and I shall raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is truly food, and my blood is truly drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood stays in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of the Shamaim, not as your fathers ate the manna and died. He who eats this bread shall live forever. He said this in a congregation, teaching in Kephanahim. Therefore, many of his taught ones, having heard, said, This word is hard. Who is able to hear it? But Yahushua, knowing within himself that his taught ones were grumbling about this, said to them, Does this make you stumble? What if you see Haban Adam going up where he was before? Is it not the Ruach that gives life? The flesh does not profit at all. The words that I speak to you are Ruach and are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Yahushua knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would deliver him up. And he said, because of this, I have said to you, that no one is able to come to me unless it has been given to him by my Abba. From then on, many of his taught ones withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. Yahushua therefore said to the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Then Shimon Kepha answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You possess words of everlasting life. And we have believed, and we know that you are the Mashiach, the son of the living Alua. Yahushua answered them, Have I not chosen you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? He was now speaking of Yehuda from Kiroth, the son of Shimon, for he, one of the twelve, was about to deliver him up.
chapter 7. And after this, Yahusha was walking in Galil, for he did not wish to walk in Yahuda, because of the Yahudim were seeking to kill him. And the festival of the Yahudim was near. Hachag Sukkot. So his brother said to him, Get away from here and go into Yahuda, so that your Talmudim also see the works that you are doing. For no one acts in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these works, show yourselves to the world. For even his Achim, his brothers, did not believe in him. Yahusha therefore said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. It is impossible for the world to hate you, but it hates me because I bear witness of it, that its works are wicked. You go up to this festival, and I am not yet going up to this festival, for my time has not yet been filled. And having said this to them, he stayed in Galil. But when his Achim, his brothers, had gone up to the festival, then he also went up, not openly, but as it were, in secret. The Yahudim, therefore, were seeking him at the festival and said, Where is he? Where is he? And there was much grumbling about him among the crowd. Some were saying, He is too. He is tov. He's good. But others were saying, La, la. But he is leading the crowd astray. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Yahudim. And about the middle of the festival, Yahushua went into the set-apart place, and he was teaching. And the Yahudim were marveling, saying, How does this man know letters, not having learned? And Yahushua answering them and said, My doctrine, my teaching is not mine, but it is his who sent me. If anyone desires to do his desire, he shall know concerning the teaching, whether it is from Alua or whether I speak of myself. He who speaks from himself is seeking his own kabod, but he who seeks the kabod of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moshe give you the Torah? Yet none of you even keep the Torah. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered and said, You have a demon. Who seeks to kill you? Yahushua answered and said to them, I did one work and you all marvel. Because of this, Moshe has given you the circumcision. Though it is not from Moshe, but from the fathers. And you circumcise a man on the Shabbat. If a man receives circumcision on the Shabbat so that the Torah of Moshe should not be broken, are you wroth with me because I am man? I made a man entirely well on Shabbat? Do not judge according to the appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Therefore, some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they are seeking to kill? And see, he speaks boldly. And they say none at all to him. Could it be that the rulers truly know that this is truly Hamashiach? But we know where this one is from. And when Hamashiach comes, no one knows where he is from. Yahushua therefore cried out in a set-apart place, teaching and saying, You both know me and know where I am from. And I have not come of myself. But he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. But I know him, because I am from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of the crowd believed in him and said, When Hamashiach comes, shall he do more signs than this one has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these matters concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to seize him. Therefore Yahushua said to them, Yet a little while I am with you, then I go to him who sent me. You shall seek me, and you shall not find me. 
and where I am going, you are unable to come. The Yehudim, therefore, said to themselves, Where is he about to go? That we shall not find them. Is he about to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this word which he said, You shall seek me, and you shall not find me? And where I am, you are unable to come. And on that last day, the great day of the festival, Yahushua stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me, and let him who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living water. And this he said concerning the Ruach, which those believing in him were about to receive. For the Ruach HaKadosh was not yet given, because Yahusha was not yet esteemed. Many from the crowd, when they heard this word, then said, This truly is Hanabi. This truly is the prophet. Others said, This is Hamashiach. But others said, Does Hamashiach then come out of Galilee? Did not the scripture say that Hamashiach comes from the seed of Daud and from the village of Bethlehem, where Daud was? So a division came about among them because of him. And some of them wished to take him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers therefore came to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said to them, why did you not bring him? The officer said, Never has any man spoke like this man. The Pharisees therefore answered them, saying, Have you also been led astray? Has any of the rulers or any of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not know the Torah is cursed. Nicodemus, who came to Yahushua by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our Torah judge a man unless it hears him first? And knows what he is doing? They answered and said to him, Are you also from Galil? Search and see that no Nabi has arisen out of Galil. And each one went to his own house. Chapter 8 And Yahushua went to the Mount of Olives, and at dawn he came again into the set of hard place. And all the people were coming to him, and having sat down, he began teaching them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery, and having set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And in the Torah, Moshe commanded that such should be stoned. What then do you say? And this they said, trying him, so that they might accuse him. But Yahushua, bending down, wrote on the ground, with the finger as though he did not hear but as they kept on questioning him he straightened up and said to them he who is without sin among you let him be first to throw a stone at her and bending down again he wrote on the ground and when they heard it being reproved by their consciences went out one by one beginning from the older ones until the last and Yahushua was left alone and the woman standing in the middle and Yahushua straightening up and seeing no one but the woman said to her woman where are those your accusers of yours did no one condemn you she said no one Adon no one master and Yahushua said to her Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Therefore Yahushua spoke to them again, saying, Ani or I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possesses the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness about yourself. Your witness is not true. Yahushua answered and said to them, Even if I witness concerning myself, my witness is true, for I know where I come from and where I'm going, but you do not know, 
from where I come from or where I go. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true because I am not alone in it, but I and Ha'ab who has sent me. And in your Torah also, it has been written that the witness of two men is true. I am one who witnesses concerning myself and Ha'aba who sent me witnesses concerning me. Therefore they said to him, Where is your Abba? Yahushua answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would have known my father also. These words Yahushua spoke in the treasury, teaching in the set-apart place, and no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. Therefore Yahushua said to them again, I am going away, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sin. Where I go, you are unable to come. Then the Yahudim said, Shall he kill himself? Because he says, Where I go, you are unable to come. And he said to them, You are from below, and I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Yahushua said to them, Altogether, which I even say to you, I have much to say to you and to judge concerning you, but he who has sent me is true. And what I heard from him, those words I speak to the world. They did not know that he spoke to them of Ha'aba, of the Father. So Yahushua said to them, When you lift up the son of Adam, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do none at all of myself. But even as my Ab has taught me, these words I do speak. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. As he was speaking these words, many believed in him. So Yahushua said to those Yahudim who believed in him, If you stay in my word, you are truly my talk ones, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are the seed of Abraham, and have been servants to no one at any time. How do you say you shall become free? Yahushua answered them, Amat o Amat, truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone doing sin is a servant of sin, and the servant does not stay in the house forever. But a son, a son stays forever. If then the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are of the seed of Abraham, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my Ab, and you do what you have learned from your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Yahushua said to them, If Abraham were your father, and if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has spoken to you the truth, which I have heard from Alua. This Abraham did not do. You do the works of your father. Then they said to him, We were not born of whoring. We have one father, Alua. Yahushua then said to him, If Alua were your father, you would love me, for I came forth from Alua and am here, for I have not come of myself. But he sent me. Why do you not know what I say? Because you are unable to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you wish to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and has not stood in the truth, because there is no truth in him, and when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I speak to you the truth, you do not believe me. Who of you proves me wrong concerning sin? And if I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? He was of Alua, here's the words of Alua. Therefore you do not hear them because you are not of Alua. The Yahudim answered and said, 
Did we not say well that you are a Shamaroni and have a demon? Yahushua answered, I do not have a demon, but I value my father, and you do not value me. And I do not seek my own esteem. There is one who is seeking and is judging. Truly, truly, I say unto you, if anyone guards my words, he shall never see death at all. The Yahudim said to him, Now we know you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets, and you say, if anyone guards my word, he shall never taste death at all? Are you greater than the father Abraham who died and the prophets? Whom do you make to be yourself? Yahushua answered, if I esteem myself, my esteem is nothing at all. It is my Abba who esteems me, of whom you say he is your Alua, and you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say, I do not know him, I should be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I guard his word. Your father Abraham was glad that he should see my day, and he saw it, and he did rejoice. The Yahudim therefore said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you seen Abraham? Yahushua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. Therefore they picked up stones to throw at him. But Yahushua was hidden and went out of the set-apart place, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Chapter 9 And passing by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his taught ones asked him, saying, Rabboni, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? Yahushua answered, Neither. This man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of Elua might be made manifest in him. It is necessary for me to work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one is able to work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and then applied the clay to the eyes of the blind man. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Shiloh, which means sent. So he went and washed and came seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who saw him before, that he was blind, said, Is this not he who was sitting and begging? Others said, This is, this is him. Others said, uh, He's like him. But he said, I am. It's me. They said to him, how were your eyes opened? And he answered and said, A man named Yahushua made clay and applied it to my eyes and said to me, Go into the pool Shaloach and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him to the Pharisees. Now it was Shabbat when Yahushua had made the clay and opened his eyes. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, I washed, and now I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not of Elua, because he does not even guard the Shabbat. Others said, How is a man who is a sinner able to do such miracles? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him who opened your eyes? And he said, He is a Nabi, he is a prophet. However, the Yahudim did not believe concerning him that he had been blind or received his sight, till they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how his eyes have been opened, we don't know. Or how he now sees, we don't know. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak concerning himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Yahudim. For the Yahudim had already agreed that if anyone should confess that Yahushua was Mashiach, that he should be put out of the assembly. Because of this, his parents said, He is of age, ask him. 
So for the second time, they called the man who was blind and said to him, Give esteem to Elua. We know that this man is a sinner. Then he said and answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. I only know that I was blind and now I see. And they asked him once more, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Why do you wish to hear it again? Do you wish to become his taught ones too? And they abused him and said, You are his taught one, but we are taught ones of Moshe. We know that Elua has spoken to Moshe, but this one, we don't know where he's from. This man answered and said to them, Why, this is a wonder. You do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. And we know that Elua does not hear sinners, but if anyone fears Elua and does his desire, him he hears. From of old it has never been heard that anyone should open the eyes of one who was born blind. If this one were not from Elua, he could not have done this at all. And they answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and now you're trying to teach us? And they cast him out. Yahushua heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the son of Elua? And he answered and said, Who is he, master, that I should believe in him? And Yahushua said to him, You have both seen him, and he who speaks with you is he. And he said, Khan, master, I believe. And he bowed before him. And Yahushua said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those not seen might see, and those might become blind who see. And those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words, and they said to him, Are we blind too? Yahushua said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. Chapter 10 Truly, truly, I say unto you, he who does not enter through the door into the sheepfold climbs up another way. That one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. And they shall by no means follow a stranger, but shall flee from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Yahushua used this figure of speech, but they did not know what he had been saying to them. Yahushua therefore said to them again, Truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and shall go out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to slaughter and to destroy. I have come that they might possess life and that they might possess it beyond measure. Ani Ra Tob, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But the hireling, but the hireling not being a shepherd, is one who does not own the sheep. And when he sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. Now the hireling flees because he is a hireling and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Even as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. The other sheep I have which are not of this fold, I have to bring them as well. 
and they shall hear my voice, and there they shall be one flock, one shepherd. Because of this, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to receive it again. And no one takes it from me, but I do lay it down of myself. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to receive it again. And this mitzvah, this command, I have received from my Ab. Again, there came a division among the Yahudim because of these words. And many of them said, He has a demon and he is mad. Why do you listen to him? And others says, These are not the words of one possessed by a demon. Is a demon able to open the eyes of the blind? And at that time, at the Hanukkah, came to be in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Yahushua was walking in a set apart place in the porch of Shalomo. So the Yahudim surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in suspense? If you are HaMashiach, just say it to us plainly. And Yahushua answered them, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Ab's name shall bear witness concerning me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them everlasting life, and they shall by no means ever perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are a cod. And again, the Yahudim picked up stones to stone him. And Yahushua answered, Many good works have I shown you from my father, because of which of these works do you stone me? And the Yahudim answered him, saying, We do not stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself a lure. Yahushua answered them, saying, Is it not written in your Torah? I said, You are a lure, him? If he called them Eluahim, to whom the word of Elua came, and it is impossible for, impossible for the scripture to be broken, do you say of him who the Father has caduced and sent into the world, you are blasphemer because I said, I am the son of Elua? If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, Though you do not believe me, believe the works so that you know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they were seeking again to seize him. But he went forth out of their hand and went once more to the other side of the yard and to the place where Yochanan was immersing at first. And there he stayed. And many came to him and said, Yochanan indeed did no sign Yet all that Yochanan said about this man was true, and many believed on him there. Chapter 11 And a certain one was sick, Elisar, from Beth and Yah, the village of Miriam and her sister Martha. Now it was Miriam who anointed the master with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Elisar was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Master, see he whom you love is sick. But when Yahushua heard, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the esteem of Elua, so that the son of Elua might be esteemed by it. Now Yahushua loved Martha and her sister, and Alasar. Therefore, when he heard that he was sick, then indeed he stayed at that place where he was two more days. Then after this, he said to his taught ones, let us go back to Yahudah. The taught ones said to him, Rabboni, the Yahudim were but now seeking to stone you, and you're gonna go back there? Yahushua answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not with him. 
He said this, and after that, he said to them, Our friend Alasar has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. Therefore the taught one said to him, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he shall recover. But Yahushua had spoken about his death, whereas they brought that he spoke, whereas they thought that he spoke of taking rest and sleep. So then Yahushua said to them plainly, Alasar has died. And for your sake I am glad I was not there in order for you to believe. But let us go to him. Toma, who was called the twin, then said to his fellow taught ones, Let us also go, so that we die with him. Therefore, when Yahushua arrived, he found that he had already been four days in the tomb. Now Bethanyah was near Yerushalam, about fifteen stadia away. And many of the Yahudim had come to Martha and Maryam to comfort them concerning their brother. Martha then, when she had heard that Yahushua was coming, met him, but Mariam was sitting in the house. Martha then said to Yahushua, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask, Alua, Alua shall give it to you. And Yahushua said to her, your brother shall live again, he shall rise. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Yahushua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. And everyone that is living and believing in me shall never die at all. Do you believe this? She said to him, Khan, Master, I believe that you are Hamashiach, the son of Elua, who is coming into the world. And having said this, she went away and called her sister Mariam secretly, saying, Rabboni is here, and he calls you. And when she heard, she rose up quickly and came to him. And Yahushua had not yet come into the village, but was in the place where Martha met him. Therefore the Yahudim who were with her in the house and were comforting her when they saw that Mariam rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Mariam, therefore, when she came to where Yahushua was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Yahushua, therefore, when he saw her weeping, and the Yahudim who came with her weeping, he groaned in his ruach, and he was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Master, come and see. Then Yahushua wept. And the Yahudim therefore said, Look at how he loved him. And some of them said, was this one who opened the eyes of the blind man not also able to prevent this one from dying? Yahushua therefore again groaning in himself came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone lay against it. Yahushua said, take away the stone. Martha and the sister of him who had died said to him, Master, Already he smells, for it has been four days. Yahushua said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, then you shall see the kabod of Elua? So they took away the stone where the dead man was laid. And Yahushua lifted up his eyes and said, Abba, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know you always hear me. But because of the crowd standing by, I said this in order that they believe that you have sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Alazar, come out. And he who died came out bound feet and hands with wrappings. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Yahushua said to them, 
loosen him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Yahudim who had come to Mariam and had seen what Yahushua did believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them what Yahushua did. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What are we going to do? Because this man does many signs. If we let him alone like this, they shall all believe in him. And the Romans shall come and take away from us both our place and nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being Kohen Agadol that year, said to them, You don't know anything, neither do you consider that it is better for us that one man die for the people than the entire nation should perish. But he did not say this from himself. But being Kohen Hagadol that year, he prophesied that Yahushua was about to die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but to gather together into one the children of Alua, who were scattered abroad. So from that day on, they plotted to kill him. Yahushua therefore no longer went openly among the Yahudim, but went from there into a country near the wilderness to a city called Aphraim, and remained there with his Talmudim. Now the Pesach of the Yahudim was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Pesach to set themselves apart. And so they were seeking Yahushua and spoke among one another, standing in a set-apart place. What do you think? Is he not coming to the festival at all? And both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should disclose it in order for them to seize him. Chapter 12 Accordingly, Yahushua, six days before the Peshach, came to Beth Anath, where Eleazar was, who had died, whom he raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha served, while Eleazar was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Miriam took a pound of costly perfume of nard, anointed, the feet of Yahushua, 
and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Then one of his taught ones, Yehuda from Kiroth, son of Shimon, who was about to deliver him up, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And he said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag, and he used to take what was put into it. Yehusha then said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Then a great crowd of the Yehudim learned that he was there, and they came not on account of Yehusha only, but also to see, see Eleazar, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests resolved to kill Eleazar as well, because on account of him, many of the Yehudim went away and believed in Yehusha. On the next day, a great crowd who had come to the festival, when they heard yet that Yehusha was coming to Yerushalayim, took the branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, and were crying out, Hoshiana, blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yehusha, of Yahuwah, Baruch HaBab Hashem Yahuwah, the sovereign of Yahshua. Then Yahusha, having found a young donkey, sat on it, as it has been written, Do not fear, daughter of Zion. See, your sovereign is coming, sitting on the colt of a donkey. At first, his top ones did not understand this, but when Yahusha was esteemed, then they remembered that this was written about him, and that they had done this to him. Therefore the crowd, who were with him when he called Eleazar out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, were bearing witness. On account of this, the crowd also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees then said among themselves, You see how you are getting nowhere at all. Look, the world has gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among those coming up to worship at the festival. These then came to Philip, who was from Beth Zedia of Galil, and were asking him, saying, Master, we wish to see Yahusha. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Yahusha. And Yahusha answered them, saying, The hour has come for Haban Adam to be esteemed. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life shall lose it, and he who hates his life in this world shall preserve it for everlasting life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant also shall be. If anyone serves me, Ha'ava shall value him. Now I myself am troubled, and what shall I say? Abba, save me from this hour. But for this reason, I came to this hour. Abba, esteem your name. Then a voice came from the Shamayim. I have both esteemed it and shall esteem it again. So the crowd who stood by and heard it were saying there that there had been a thunder. Others said a messenger had spoken to him. Yehusha answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world shall be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, shall draw all men unto myself. This he said, signifying by what death he was about to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard out of the Torah that the Mashiach remains forever. And how do you say, Haban Adam has to be lifted up? 
Who is this Haban Adam? Yahushua therefore said to them, Yet a little while, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. And he who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you become sons of light. These words Yahushua spoke and went off and was hidden from them. But though he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. That the word of Yeshiyahu the prophet might be filled, which he spoke, Yahuwah, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of Yahuwah been revealed? Because of this, they were unable to believe. Because again, Yeshiyahu said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, so that they should not see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn, and I shall heal them. Yes, Yahu said this when he saw his esteem and spoke of him. Still, even among the rulers, many did believe in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the congregation. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of Elua. Then Yahushua cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. And if anyone hears my words, but does not watch over them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one who judges him. The word that I have spoken shall judge him in the last day, because I have spoke not from myself, but from Ha'aba who has sent me. He has given me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, as the Father has said to me, so I speak. Chapter 13. And before the festival of Peshach, Yahushua, knowing that his hour had come, that he should move out of this world unto the Abba, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper taking place, the devil having already put it into his heart, put it into the heart of Yehuda from Kiroth, son of Shimon, to deliver him up. Yahusha, knowing that his Abba had given all into his hands, and that he came from Alua and was going to Alua, rose from supper and laid aside his garments. And having taken a towel, he girded himself. After that, he put water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the tall ones and to wipe them with a towel which he was girded. And so he came to Shimon Kepha and said to him, Master, do you wash my feet? Yahushua answered and said to him, you do not know what I am doing now, but you shall know after this. Kepha said to him, By no means shall you wash my feet ever. Yahushua answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Shimon Kepha said to him, Master, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahushua said to him, He who has had a bath does not need to wash except his feet but is clean altogether and you are clean but not all of you for he knew who would deliver him up so he said you are not all clean so when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and sat down again he said to them do you know what I have done to you you call me Moray, 
and I don't. And you say, well, for I am. Then if I, Adon and More, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is an emissary greater than he who sent him. If you know these teachings, blessed are you if you do them. I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture might be filled, he who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I say to you, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you shall believe that I am. When Yahushua had said this, he was troubled in Ruach, and witnessed and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you shall deliver me up. The top ones looked at one another, doubting of whom he spoke. And one of his top ones, whom Yahushua loved, was reclining on the bosom of Yahushua. Shimon Kepha then motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. And leaning back on the breast of Yahushua, he said to him, Master, who is it? Yahushua answered, It is he whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Yehuda from Karoth, son of Shimon. And after the piece of bread, Hasatan entered into him. Yahushua therefore said to him, What you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew why he said this to him. For some were supposing, because Yehuda had the bag that Yahushua was saying to him, buy what we need for the festival, or that we should give somewhat to the poor. So having received the piece of bread, he went on straight away, and it was night. When therefore he went out, Yahushua said, Now Haban Adam has been esteemed, and Alua has been esteemed in him. If Alua has been esteemed in him, Alua shall also esteem him in himself, and straightway esteem him. Little children, yet a little while, I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said to the Yahudim, where I am going, you are unable to come. I now also say to you, a renewed command I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this you shall know that you are my taught ones. If you have love for one another. Shimon Kepha said to him, Master, where are you going? Yahushua answered him, Where I am going, you are unable to follow me now, but then afterwards you shall follow me. Kepha said to him, Master, why are Am I unable to follow you now? I shall lay down my life for you. Yahushua answered him, Shall you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, The cock shall crow at all. The cock shall not crow at all until you have denied me three times.
chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in the Lord, believe also in me. In the house of my eye are many stained places, and if not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you might be too. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Tuma said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going, and how are we able to know the way? Yahushua said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you have known my Father too. From now on, you know him and have seen. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Yahushua said to him, Have I been with you so long? And you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Ab. And how do you now say, show us the Father? Do you not believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak for myself. But the Father who stays in me, he does the work. He does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me for the works itself. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also. In greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Ab. And whatever you ask in my name, that I shall do in order that the Ab might be esteemed in the Son. If you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. If you love me, you shall guard my commands, and I shall ask the Ab, and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever. The Ruach of Truth, whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him, for he stays with you, and he shall be with you. I shall not leave you orphans, I am coming to you. Yet a little while, and the world no longer sees me, but you shall see me, because I live and you shall live. In that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me, and he who shall love me shall be loved of my Father and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. Yahuda, not the one from Kerioth, said to him, Master, what has come about that you are about to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Yahusha answered, If anyone loves me, he shall guard my word, and my father shall love him, and we shall come to him and make our stay with him. And he who does not love me does not guard my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but of the Abba who sent me. These words I have spoken to you while still with you. But the Helper, the Ruach HaKadosh, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all and remind you of everything that I said to you. Shalom, I live with you. My shalom I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You heard that I said to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you did love me, you would have rejoiced that I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now, I have told you before it takes place, so that when it takes place, you shall believe. And I shall no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he possesses none at all in me. 
but in order for the world to know that I love the Father, and that as the Father commanded me, so I am doing. Kumi, arise up. Let us go from here. Chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that bears fruit, every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it bears more fruit. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. So stay in me, and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself, unless it stays in the vine, so neither you unless you stay in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Because without me, you are able to do nothing. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you stay in me and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. And this my father is esteemed, that you bear much fruit and you shall be loved of my taught ones. And you shall be my taught ones. And as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Stay in my love. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love. Even as I have guarded my Father's commands, and I stay in his love. These words I have spoken to you so that my joy might be in you, and that your joy might be complete. This is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his adon, his master, is doing. But I have called you friends for all teachings which I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask in the Father, in my name, he might give it to you. These words I command you so that you love another. If the world hates you, just know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you because the world loves its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, for that reason the world hates you. Remember the word that I spoke, that I spoken to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they shall persecute you as well. If they have guarded my word, they shall guard yours too. But all this they shall do to you because of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I did not do among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they both have seen and have hated both me and my father. But that the word might be filled, which was written in their Torah, they have hated me without a cause. And when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from my Abba, the Ruach of Truth, who comes from the Father, he shall bear witness of me. But you also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Chapter 16 These words I have spoken to you, so that you do not stumble, they shall put you out of the congregations. But an hour is coming when everyone who kills you 
shall think that he is rendering service to Alua. And this they do to you because they did not know the Father nor me. But I have said these words to you so that when the hour comes, you remember that I told them to you. And these words I did not say to you at the beginning, for I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me. And no one of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these words to you, grief has filled your hearts. But I say the truth to you. It is better for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper shall not come to you at all. But if I go, I shall send him to you. And having come, he shall convict the world concerning sin, concerning righteousness, concerning judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. And I have still many words to say to you, but you are unable to bear them now. But when he comes, the Ruach of Truth, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, he shall speak. And he shall announce to you what is to come. He shall esteem me, and he shall take of what is mine and announce it to you. All that the Father has is mine. That is why I said that he takes from what is mine and announces it to you. A little while and you do not see me, and again a little while and you shall see me. Therefore, some of his top ones said to one another, what, what, what is this he says to us? A little while and you do not see me, and again a little while you shall see me, and because I'm going to my father. So they said, what is that he says? A little while. We do not know what he is saying. Yahusha therefore knew that they were wishing to ask him. And he said to them, Are you asking one another about what I said a little while, and you do not see me, and again a little while you shall see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you shall weep and shall lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be grieved, but your grief shall become joy. The woman has grief when she is in labor because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer is to remember her as affliction. For joy that a man was born into the world. And you therefore have grief now, but I shall see you again, and your heart shall rejoice. And no one, and no one takes your joy away from you. In that day you shall ask me nothing at all. Truly, truly, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive, in order that your joy might be complete. These words I have spoken to you in figures of speech, but an hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but I shall declare the Father plainly to you. In that day you shall ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself does love you because you have loved me and have believed that I have come forth from Alua. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His taught one said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and not using a figure of speech. Now we know that you know all and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from Alua. Yahushua answered them, Do you now believe? See, an hour is coming and has now come that you are scattered, each one to his own, and you leave me alone. Yet, I am not alone because my Father is with me. These words I have spoken to you, that in me you might have shalom. In the world you have pressure, but take courage. I have 
overcome the world. Chapter 17 Yahushua said these words and lifted up his eyes to the Shamayim and said, Abba, the hour has come. Esteem your son so that your son also might esteem you. And as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give everlasting life to those whom you have given him. And this is everlasting life, that they should know you, the only true Elua and Yahushua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. I have esteemed your name on the earth, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. And now esteem me with yourself, Father, with your esteem, which I had had with you before the world was, I have revealed your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have guarded your word. Now they have come to know that all you gave to me is from you, because the words which you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and have truly known that I have came forth from you, and they believe that you have sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been esteemed in them. And I am no more in the world, but these, these are in the world. And I come to you, Kadush Abba, guard them in your name which you set apart have given me, which you have given me, so that they might be one, even as we are. And when I was with them in the world, I was guarding them in your name, which you have given me, and I have watched over them, and not one of them has perished except for the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to you, and I speak these words in the world so that they have joy, that they have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word, and the world hated them because they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the wicked one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Kadush them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for them I set myself apart, so that they too might be set apart in truth. And I do not pray for these alone, but also for those believing in me through their word so that they may all be one, be a cod, as you, Abba, are in me and I in you, so that they too might be a cod in us, so that the world might believe that you have sent me and the esteem which you gave me I have given them, so that they might be one, a cod, even as we are a cod. I in them and you in me, so that they might be perfected into one, so that the world knows that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Abba, I desire that those who you have given me might be with me where I am, so that they see my esteem with which you have given me, because you have loved me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, Indeed, the world did not know you, but I knew you, and these knew you have sent me. And I have made your name known to them, and shall make it known that the love which you love me might be in them, and I in them.
chapter 18. Having said these words, Yahushua went out with his taught ones beyond the Kizron Dorian, where there was a garden into which he and his taught ones entered. And Yehuda, who delivered him up, also knew the place, because Yahushua often met there with his taught ones. Yehuda then, having received the company of soldiers and the officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Yahushua then, knowing that all that they would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? And they answered him, Yahushua of Nazareth. Yahushua said to them, I am. And Yehuda, who had delivered him up, was also standing with them. When therefore he said to them, I am, they drew back and fell on the ground. Once more he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Yahushua of Nazareth. Yahushua answered and said, I said to you that I am. If then you seek me, allow these to go. In order that the word might be fulfilled which he spoke, of those whom you have given me, I have lost none. Then Shimon Kapha, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Melech. And Yahusha said to Kapha, Put your sword into this sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? And then the company of soldiers and the commander and the cell officer of the Yahudim seized Yahusha and bound him, and they led him away to Hanan first. For he was the father in law of Caiaphas, who was the Kohen Hagado that year. Now Caiaphas was the one who gave counsel to the Yahudim that it was better that one man should die for the people. And Shimon Kapha followed Yahusha with another top one, and that top one was known to the high priest. And when Yahusha entered the courtyard of the high priest, but Kapha was standing outside the door so that the other top one who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Kapha in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Kapha, Are you also one of this man's tall ones? And he said, I need low. No, I am not. And the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there because it was cold and they warmed themselves. And Kapha was standing with them and warning, warming himself. Then the Kohen Agado asked Yahushua about his top ones and his teachings. And Yahushua answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I also taught in the congregation and in the set-apart place where the Yahudim always meet. And I spoke no word in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. See, they know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the officers who stood by slapped Jehusha in the face, saying, Do you answer the Kohen Haggado this way? And Yahusha answered him, If I have spoken evilly, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Hanan sent him bound to the Kohen Haggado, Kaifa. And Shimon Kapha was standing and warming himself. And they said to him, Are you also one of his tall ones? And he denied and said, I need low. No, I'm not. And one of the servants of the Kohen Haggadol, a relative of one whose ear Kapha cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And then Kapha again denied it. And immediately the cock crowed. Then they led Yahushua from Caiapha to the palace, and it was early, and they themselves did not go into the palace lest they should be defiled, but they might 
eat the Pesach. Pilate therefore came out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They said unto him, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. Then Pilate said, You take him and judge him according to your law. Then the Yahudim said, It is not right for us to put anyone to death in order that the word of Yahushua might be filled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he was about to die. Then Pilate went back into the palace and called Yahushua and said to them, Are you the sovereign of the Yahudim? And Yahushua answered him, Do you say this from yourself, or did the others talk to you about me? And Pilate said, Am I Yahudi? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What did you do? Yahushua answered and said, My reign is not of this world. If my reign were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Yahudim. But now my reign is not from here. Then Pilate said to him, you are a sovereign then. Yahushua answered, You say it, because I am a sovereign. For this cause I was born, and for this I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Yahudim and said, I find no guilt in him, but you have a habit to release someone to you at the Pesach. Do you wish then that I release to you the sovereign of the Yahudim? And they all shouted again, saying, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Chapter 19. Then therefore Pilate took Yahushua, flogged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him, and came to him and said, Greetings, sovereign of the Yahudim. And they slapped him in the face. And Pilate went outside again and said to them, See, I'm bringing to him out to you to let you know that I find no guilt in him. Then Yahushua came outside wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said, See the man. So when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Impale! Impale! Pilate said to them, You take him and impale him, for I find no guilt in him. And the Yahudim answered, We have a law, we have a Torah. And according to our law, he ought to die, for he had made himself the son of Elua. So when Pilate heard this word, he was more afraid, and went back into the palace and asked Yahushua, Where are you from? But Yahushua gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I possess authority to impel you? I possess authority to release you? Yahushua answered, You would possess no authority against me if it were not given to you from above. But because of this, he who has delivered me to you has greater sin. So from then on, Pilate was seeking to release him. But the Yahudim shouted, saying, If you release this one, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a sovereign does not speak against. Everyone who makes himself a sovereign does speak against Caesar. Therefore, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Yahushua out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called pavement, but in Avrit Garbata. And it was the preparation day of the Pesach week, and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Yahudim, See your sovereign. But they shouted, Away, away, impel him. Pilate said to them, Shall I impel your sovereign? 
The chief priest answers, we have no sovereign but Caesar. At that time, they, then he delivered him to be impaled. And they took Yahushua to lead him away. And bearing his stake, he went out to the so-called place of the skull, which is called in Ivrit Golgotha, where they impaled him and two others with him, one on his side and one on that side, and Yahushua in the middle. And Pilate wrote on the title and put it on the stake, and it was written, Yahushua of Nazareth, Hamalek Yahudim, the sovereign of the Yahudim. Many of the Yahudim therefore read this title, for the place where Yahushua was impaled was near the city, and it was written in Ivrit, in Greek, and in Roman. So the chief priests of the Yahudim said to Pilate, Do not write the sovereign of the Yahudim. But he said, I am the sovereign of the Yahudim. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had impelled Yahushua, took his outer garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and the inner garment. But the inner garment was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. So they said to each other, Let us not tear it, but let's cast lots for it. Whose it shall be? In order that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments, and for my clothing they cast lots. The soldier, therefore, indeed did this, and by the stake of Yahushua stood his mother and his mother's sister. Miriam, the wife of Kolapha, and Miriam from Magdala. Then Yahushua, seeing his mother, and the taught one whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, see your son. Then to the taught one he said, See your mother. And from that hour, the top one took her to his own home. After this, Yahushua, knowing that all had been accomplished, in order that the scripture might be accomplished, said, I thirst. And a bowl of sour wine stood there, and they filled a sponge with the sour wine and put it on his own, and held it to his mouth. So when Yahushua took of the sour wine, he said, it has been accomplished, and bowing his head, he gave up his ruach. Therefore, since it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the stake on the Shabbat, for the Shabbat was a high one, the Yahudim asked Pilate to have their legs broken and that they be taken away. Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was impelled with him. But when they came to Yahushua, they saw that he had already died, and they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and instantly blood and water came out. And he who had seen this witnessed, and his witness is true. And, his, and he knows that he is speaking the truth in order that you might believe. For this took place in order for the scripture to be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they look on him whom they pierce. And after this, Yosef of Ramathim, being a taught one of Yahushua, but secretly for the fear of Yahudim, asked Pilate that he might take the body of Yahushua. And Pilate gave permission. Therefore he came and took the body of Yahushua, and Nicodemon, who at first came to Yahushua by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. And they took the body of Yahushua and bound it in linen wrappings with the spices, as was the habit of the Yahudim for burial. And at that place where he was impaled, there was a garden. And in the garden, a fresh tomb in which not yet had 
one been laid there then because of the preparation day of the Yahudim they laid Yahusha because the tomb was near chapter 20 and on day one of the week Miriam from Magdala came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb so she ran and came to Shimon Kapha and to the other top ones of whom Yahusha loved and said to them they have taken the master out of the tomb and we do not know where they laid him then Kapha and the other top one went out and they were going to the tomb and the two were running together but the other top one outran Kapha and came to the tomb first and stooping down he saw where the linen wrappings lying but he did not go in then Shimon Kapha came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen wrappings lying and the cloth which he had been on his head and lying with the linen wrappings not lying with the linen wrappings but folded up and placed by itself so then the other top ones who came to the tomb first also went in and he saw and he believed for they did not know the scriptures that he has to rise again from the dead therefore the top ones went away again by themselves but Miriam was standing outside by the tomb weeping then as she wept they stooped down into the tomb and saw two messengers two Malachim and white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Yahusha had been laid and they said to her woman why do you weep she said to them because they have taken away my master and I do not know where they laid him and having said this she turned around and saw Yahusha standing but she did not know that it was Yahusha Yahusha said to her woman why do you weep whom do you seek thinking he was the gardener she said to him master if you have carried him away say to me where you put him and I shall take him away Yahushua said to her Miriam she turned and said to him Rabboni which means teacher Yahushua said to her do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to my Abba but go to my Achim and say to them I am ascending to my Abba and to your Abba to my Alua and to your Alua Miriam from Magdala came announcing to the top ones that she had seen the master and that he had told her this when therefore it was evening on that day day one of the week and when the doors were shut and the top ones met for the fear of the Yahudim Yahushua came and stood in the midst and said to them Shalom Alechem and having said this he showed them his hands and his side the top ones therefore rejoiced when they saw the master then Yahushua said to them again Shalom Alechem as the father has sent me I also have sent you and having said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the Ruach HaKadosh if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them and if you retain the sins of any they are retained but Toma called the twin of the twelve was not with them when Yahushua came so other top ones said to him we have seen the master but he said to them unless I see his hands the mark of the nails and put my finger into the imprint of the nails and put my hand into his side I'm not believing and after eight days his top ones were again inside and told my with them Yahushua came the doors having been shut he stood in the midst and said Shalom Aleichem then he said to Tama bring your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving but believing and Tama answered and said to him Adonai Shali Ualua Shali which is my master 
and my Lua. Yahushua said to him, Toma, because you have seen me, you have believed. Baruch are those who have not seen and have believed. There were indeed many other signs that Yahushua did in the presence of his Talmudin, which are not written in this book, but these have been written so that you believe that Yahushua is HaMashiach, the son of Elua, and that believing you might possess life in his name. Chapter 21 After this, Yahushua manifested himself again to the Ta'ons at the Sea of Kinnereth, and he manifested this way. Shimon Kepha and Toma called the twin, and Nathaniel of Kenav in Galil, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his Ta'ons were together. Shimon Kepha said to them, I'm going to fish. They said to him, We're coming along with you. They went out and immediately entered into the boat. And that night, they caught none at all. But when it became early morning, Yahushua stood on the beach. However, the taught ones did not know that it was Yahushua. Then Yahushua said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Throw the net on the right side of the boat, and you shall find. So they threw, and they were no longer able to draw it in because of the large number of fish. That taught one whom Yahushua loved then said to Kepha, It is the Adon. Then Shimon Kepha, hearing that it was the master, put on his outer garment, for he was stripped and plunged into the sea. And the other taught ones came into the little boat, for they were not far from the land, and about two hundred cubits dragging the net with fish. So when they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. Yahushua said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Shimon Kepha went up and dragged the net to land, filled with one hundred and fifty-three big fishes. And though there were so many, the net was not broken. Yahushua said to them, Come, have breakfast. And not one of the taught ones had the courage to ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the master. Yahushua came and took the bread and gave it to them, and the same with the fish. This was now the third time Yahushua was manifested to his taught ones after he was raised from the dead. When, therefore, they had eaten breakfast, Yahushua said to Shimon Kepha, Shimon, son of Yonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Adoni, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Shimon, son of Yonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Adoni, you know that I love you. He said to him, Shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Shimon, 
son of Yona. Do you love me? Kepha was sad because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Adonai, you know all. You know that I love you. Yahushua said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you shall stretch out your hands, and another shall gird you and bring you where you do not wish. Now this he said, signifying by what death he would esteem Alua. And having said this, he said to him, Follow me. And Kepha, turning around, saw the top one whom Yahushua loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Adoni, who is the one who is delivering you up? Seeing him, Kepha said to Yahushua, But Adoni, what about this one? Yahushua said to him, if I wish him to remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Therefore, his word went out among the brothers that this top one would not die. However, Yahushua did not say to him that he would not die, but if I desire him to remain until I come, what is it to you? This is the top one who bears witness about these matters and wrote these matters and we know that his witness is true. Now there is much else that Yahushua did. If every one of them were written down, I think that the world itself would not contain the written books. So be it. Amen. This has been the reading of Yahukanan.